Good morning, student. In today's class, we are going to learn about data and information. The learning outcomes for today's class are, at the end of the class, you student can differentiate between data, database, and information, and can give example of data and information. We are living in the era of data. Uh, this is a very famous statement by famous uh, detective Sherlock Holmes. In one of the, invest, while investigating one of his cases, he said that data, 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 I cannot make bricks without clay. Here, uh, Sherlock Holmes is referring to the facts he want to find out in order to solve the murder mystery. In short, data, or the facts were important for Sherlock Holmes also. Today we are living in an era of a digital data. As we know, more and more organizations are becoming online. There is a boom for e-commerce and e-business and almost every organization is creating and storing vast amount of data through various storage method. Just to give you a flavor of how much of data is generated by these modern organization? Let us have a look at these statistics. On the right hand side, you can see what is called as a kilo, mega, giga, tera, peta, extra, zeta, and yata. And on the left hand side, you can see the very famous organization, online organization like eBay is generating, for example, 100 petabyte of data. Google is generating almost 100 petabyte of data. And Facebook is generating 600 terabyte of data every day. So every day, the data in the world is ever increasing. Why data is important? Data is actually an asset for the company because data, proper data management, and information generation, generation and consuming this information to increase productivity and hence profit is very vital for the any organization organization or especially the commercial organizations are working for the productivity and the profit and this data is proving very vital for them. However, data can be dangerous also. Let us take an example of the data of your class. I want to create or for, the, for you third year people, I want to find out who are the probable candidate for the placement activity for the final year. And then I'm collecting your data. Now the data which I want to collect from you can be your roll number, your serial number, then your name, your gender, your address, and your marks for the second year examination. Now if I collect and store this data properly, then only it is going to be useful for me. For example, if the data is incomplete, means instead of collecting all the mar marks for all the subjects of the second year, if I only collect the mark of only few subjects, then that data can be incomplete, out of context. For example, if instead of collecting third year's electronics engineering student data, if I collect the data of mechanical engineering student, it is of no use to me. Improper, if in, a, if, if in the field of serial number, if I enter the roll number and in the field of roll number if I enter the serial number then that data is again not useful for me outdated data for example I collect the data after the your final examination and the result of few of the people was not declared at a time and then the result was declared after revaluation so now what I have to do is that I have to throw away the old data and I have to update my data with the latest data. So if my data is an older version, then it is of no use for me. Inaccurate. If I'm storing the percentage, now you know that the percentage you are scored, maybe if it is a CGPA system, then you can have a, 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 a you can have your pointer as 7.3, 7.8, 7.5 or so on. So this is a float number. Now if I define my field of data as an integer, then I can only store 7. So two students having a grade of 7.5 and 7.6 will be stored as the same as a 7. So this is an example of inaccurate data. 
inaccessible. I am storing the data and I'm not knowing or I'm not able to find out in which file I have stored the data, then that data can be become inaccessible. Or overwhelming data. What is an example of overwhelming data? If I'm storing the unnecessary data into my system, for example, I'm taking, I am interested in your placement data and, the, and, 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 and for that, suppose I'm taking your fifth standard data or sixth standard data, second standard data, then your school data, then that data will become too much and that data is not actually useful for me. So that, that can become an overwhelming data. So data is important, but if the data is incomplete or out of context, if it is improper, it is outdated, it is old, it is not accurate, it is not accessible or it is too much, then that can, that can cause a trouble for the organization. While analyzing the data, there can be some error and these errors can also affect seriously. Now let us first understand what do you mean by data. Data or data item is an elementary description of thing, event, activities and transaction that are recorded, classified and stored. It can be number, alphabet, images, audios or videos. So again coming back to the example of your class database, in that case what we can have is your roll number which is a numerical data. Your address will consist of the numbers as well as alphabet, so it's an alphanumerical data. Then for example I am storing your photographs also, then it can be an image also. Take an example of, uh, uh, take an example of uh, Facebook, you are uploading your audios and videos also, so all that is termed as a data. Now if I have this data just put together then it is called as a data items. Now what is a database? Database is nothing but storing a data in an organized way for the latter retrieval. For example, I want to store the data of your class and if I am putting just the data item like your role, role number, your name, your address, one after the other, then your percentage, then finding out something out of this data is going to be difficult for me. For example, I want to, I want to find out how many students have scored more than seven grade, then in that case, if all is stored together, it's, it is going to be very difficult for me. So in order to get the proper access to this, what I have to do is, I have to store all this data as a rows and column. The first column may be your role number, uh, serial number, the second column can be your role number, then the third column can be your name and so on. So now if I want to find out how many students have a grade greater than seven, I have to just look into the grade of, I have to just look into the column of grade and I can find out it very easily. Now processing this data is automated and that can be done through some of the software. These softwares are nothing but application which process these data and generate what we call as an information. Now what is an information or before that, what is a database? The database is nothing but storing this data in rows and columns or storing the data in an organized way is called as a retrieval. Now why we require a data or a database? We require a data or a database. As Sherlock Holmes has said, he want an information. Now what is an information? You can have something or you can extract something, particular value or meaning out of this database is nothing but is called as an information. For example, I want to find out how many students have scored more than seven, then I can, uh, that, that may be an information for me. Or I just want to find out how many students are local or how, how many students are outsider, then that can be an information for me. And this information can be processed using application. So there is, there is a reflection spot for you. You have to just tell what is the difference between data database and information. So you can pause this video for a while and then you can enlist what is the difference between data, database and information. Of course with some example. You should not repeat the example which, have, which, are, which we have discussed but rather try to find out a new example. This is an example again how the data can be useful. So see, you can see that in a typical organizations the data is collected and then it is processed and it is stored. Then after processing, this data is analyzed using some data tools in order to get some uh, information out of that and that that information can be used for the decision modeling. Then out of the information, we can have some knowledge and this knowledge can be again used for taking some decision. And then based on that, the uh, organization can survive or organization can go for a better business and then all this data is stored in a system called as an enterprise data warehouse. 
Now, what are the sources of the data in an enterprise? Where from the data comes to the enterprise? First, the data comes from the clickstream data from the website and e-commerce application. Uh, there are lot many e-commerce application and clickstream means every time you do something on this e-commerce website, the data is generated. Then from an organization, from point of sale terminal, the data may come whenever there is some sales activity, the data may come. Data may come also from the customer relationship management activities, then ERP application and supply chain application and data can also come from sales and marketing. So in today's lecture, we have discussed about what is the difference between data and database and how data is useful for getting the information. These are the references and thank you.